Hi. Now, in an earlier tutorial, I showed you that providing you had two values to the same base, in this example like x's, and you were dividing, the result was x to the power m minus n, where we just simply subtracted the powers from one another. So for instance, if we had, say, x to the power 8, and we were dividing this by x to the power 5, then they're to the same base here, x. All we need to do is just subtract the powers then. 8 take away 5 is 3. x to the power 3, or x cubed. And it doesn't matter whether we're dealing with x, it can be any other letter. It could be, for instance, y. As long as these two values are exactly the same, then the result would be y cubed, OK? But what I want to look at in this particular video is to extend this idea to negative powers. And to demonstrate this, what we'll do is we'll just get rid of this. And suppose we've got, say, 5 cubed divided by 5 to the power 4. Then, according to this rule here, because they're to the same base, we just subtract the power. So what we get is 5 to the power 3 take away 4. 5 to the power minus 1. But how do we interpret 5 to the power minus 1? I know that 5 cubed, for instance, is 5 times 5 times 5. But what about 5 to the minus 1? Well, to answer this question, let's just remove this now and think about what 5 cubed really represents. Well, it represents 5 repeatedly multiplied by itself three times over. OK, so we've got something like that. And this is being divided by 5 to the power 4. So we've got 5 being multiplied by itself repeatedly four times over. And in the usual way, what we can do is cancel this down. We can cancel out those two fives there. Again, we can do it here. And again, we can do it here. So what we've got then is that 1 times 1 times 1 is 1 on the top. And we're dividing this by 1 times 1 times 1, which is 1, times 5, which is just 5, 1 fifth. And so this seems to be the interpretation then to 5 to the power minus 1, where we just subtract the powers from one another by this rule. Let's try it with another example. Let's try, for instance, 3 squared, 3 to the power 2, divided by 3 to the power 6. Then, according to the division rule here, it will be 3 to the power 2 take 6, 3 to the power negative 4. But what do we mean by 3 to the power negative 4? Well, again, we can just look at this as 3 squared, which is 3 times 3, and this is all divided by 3 to the power 6. So we've got 3 repeatedly multiplied by itself 6 times over. OK, so if we simplify this by cancelling out these 3's, 3 into 3 goes once, 3 into that 3 goes once, and the same here, then what we end up with is that this equals 1 times 1 on the top, and on the bottom, we have got 1 times 1, which is 1, but times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 is 3 to the power 4. 1 over 3 to the power 4. Remember the result that we got by using this rule was 3 to the power 2 take 6, 3 to the power negative 4. So looking at these two answers, this is 5 to the power 1, if you like, giving us 5 to the power minus 1, when we have it underneath the 1 here. 1 over 3 to the 4 is the same as 3 to the power minus 4. So this gives us a general rule for handling negative powers. What this seems to suggest, then, is 
x to a negative power, x to the power minus n, is exactly the same as 1 over x to the power n. So this is a rule that you should try and learn, okay? So we'll just highlight that there. And it really is just an extension of our basic division rule. So let's just try a few more examples, okay? Let's suppose we had to say, what's the value of 2 to the minus 1? Well, 2 to the minus 1, according to this rule, n is the 1. We have got that it equals 1 over 2 to the power 1, or just simply 1 over 2, a half. If we had 8 to the power minus 2, then this would be 1 over 8 to the power 2, 1 over 8 squared. 8 squared is 8 times 8, 64, so you end up with 1 64. If we had an algebraic one, let's say we had a to the power 5, as long as we're dividing it by the same base value, a, and then we'll take, say, the power 8, we've got now a to the power 5 take 8, 8 to the power minus 3. But we've seen by this rule, this is exactly the same as 1 divided by a cubed. OK, let's take a slightly harder one. Not too hard, though, but where we have a mixture of letters. So let's say we've got x cubed multiplied by y squared. And this is all divided by x times y to the power 5. Well, we can simplify the x's. x cubed divided by x, essentially to the power 1, is going to be x to the power 3 take 1, which is x squared. And then for the y's, we've got y squared divided by y to the power 5. So that's going to be y to the power 2 take away 5, y to the power minus 3. But this is exactly the same as x squared being multiplied by y to the power minus 3. And y to the power minus 3 is the same as 1 over y cubed. And if we multiply this out, x squared times 1 gives us x squared. And then, remember, we've got x squared over 1 here, really. So 1 times y cubed is just going to be y cubed. So x squared over y cubed. And you should find, with practice on these kind of questions, that you're not going to necessarily need to put this stage in. You should be able to go from here straight to here. Or even better still, straight from here down to our answer. OK, well, I hope that's given you an idea of negative indices then and uh, how we handle them.